What's going on guys? My name is Sam. I'm Sadie. And in today's video we are going to talk about whether it's okay to be friends with people of the opposite sex if you're dating or married. So first off we just want to start it with a disclaimer that these are our own convictions that we have derived from our own experience and from the Bible what we've read. They are not necessarily set in stone. There is no Bible verse that says, thou shalt not have a friend of the opposite sex if you're dating or married. That just doesn't exist in the Bible. Obviously, our opinion today is going to be, if you are in a relationship, should you still be friends with the opposite sex? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Um, if you're not dating, it really doesn't make a difference because mm -hmm. you're not hurting anybody really so mm -hmm. yeah and actually that kind of leads us into my my first point so when you aren't seeing anyone it's actually a really good thing to be friends with somebody of the opposite sex because those friendships and getting to know people is a really big and important part of dating you know, getting to know somebody outside of the context of dating, getting to know who they are as a person, mm -hmm. how they treat their friends, how they treat their family, how they treat you when you're just a friend, um, as opposed to just going into a dating relationship with somebody where I think a lot of the time your feelings and your impression of a person can be really, really clouded. Yeah, definitely if you're not dating, um, starting a friendship with someone of the opposite sex is a perfect way to build a relationship with them to mm -hmm. grow that foundation and just see if you are compatible romantically. Mm -hmm. But if you're dating, we think that's a big no-no. Big no-no. And actually, this is probably really controversial. I don't even know how Sadie feels about this, but I personally believe that if you are not somewhat planning or think that there might be a chance that you could develop those kind of feelings for say you're a girl and you meet a guy, if you don't think there's any chance of you developing those feelings, I mean sure you can be their friend but I would kind of go into that friendship thinking to myself if I met somebody I'm not going to be able to be friends with this person mm -hmm. long term. So. You know, I think you need to go into that relationship knowing that this could be somebody that you might not be able to have a whole lot of contact with later. So in my opinion, danger number one is obviously if you're in a relationship, you're going to have arguments. Mm -hmm. And if you have a friend of the opposite sex that's your best friend, you're most likely going to want to confide in them when mm -hmm. you are fighting with your significant other. Well, if you're fighting with your significant other, you're confiding in your best friend, you're going to obviously feel like your best friend's understanding you more. Mm -hmm. And so you may be like, oh, well, you know, he understands me way more than Sam does. Like, <laughs> he just gets me a lot better. Mm -hmm. I think that that can make you develop not an emotional attachment, but I think an emotional connection to somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just think that it brings temptation that would otherwise not be there had, had you not been confiding in the opposite sex that much. And you know, for me, not being a woman, obviously, I, I want to be careful speaking for women too terribly much. But I'll, I'll it is. I'll correct you if he's. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. She'll slap me if, if need be, but not not really, but figuratively. But. Um, it, Women are much more, they tend much more towards longing for that like emotional connection as far as being attracted to someone. They want to be understood. Yeah, they want to be understood. They want to feel emotionally connected and attached to someone like someone cares, like someone's empathetic and kind of going back to her example earlier, if that's someone that they confide in, mm -hmm. if it's someone that they're telling all of their, you know, issues and problems to, it, it just, it creates an environment where you're not kind of practicing almost for leaving and cleaving. I know that the Bible says that you should leave your family and cleave to your spouse, but I think that that cleaving to your spouse goes you know, it, it goes to not even cleaving to your friends, but just, you know, you are going to be one flesh with this person. You're going to be connected. You're going to be one person with them, essentially. And, you know, I'm not saying that you need to just not have any contact with the outside world if you're dating or even married. But I think that it's a really good idea to practice having that person be your best friend, the person that you tell more, you know, everything to. Well, yeah, you want your significant other to be your best friend. Yes. You don't want to be mm -hmm. confiding in your 
non-romantic best friend more than you are your significant other mm -hmm. um, just because that's a healthy practice for marriage mm -hmm. obviously if i had a best guy friend before um or while me with sam before mm -hmm. meeting sam and then after we get married i still want to privately facetime call text go hang out with just me and another person um that's just not smart in my opinion mm -hmm. i don't think you're really setting yourself up for success and i'm not saying that you would do anything mm -hmm. or anything like that i'm just saying for us we had just made it um we didn't even really have to talk about it because all of my guy friends he's now friends with and mm -hmm. they're like the they're husband, married, yeah. fiance's of my <laughs> yeah. best friends and so we're all just like a little clan. Yeah, we, we go on, you know, we go on double dates or we just hang out as a group. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's never gotten to the point with Sadie or with me. I mean, I don't, I literally don't even know any other girls yeah. other than Sadie, but you know, it, it, it's never gotten to the point where Sadie's like, oh, I'm going to go hang out with, you know, my friend's husband by ourselves or like, you know, something like that. that yeah. That's never been a concern. Yeah, in my opinion and in my personal experience, this is not across the board, this is Sadie's experience. Mm -hmm. I never had a best guy friend that was completely platonic. Yeah. One or the other party is gonna fall at some point for each other. Mm -hmm. Just because you're really getting to know them, you're confiding in them, you're spending time with them, and you know, you see their goofy side and all of this sort of thing. And at some point, at least in my experience, somebody catches feelings. And then if they <laughs> confess their feelings, well, now it's awkward between us as friends. Mm -hmm. um, and this is obviously prior to dating mm -hmm. Sam. Um, I'm just saying that it typically doesn't work as being just friends. Now, if both of you are not dating a person and y'all are first best friends and it turns into this you know, relationship and marriage, that is wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful story. I love that. Um, we're strictly talking about if you're dating somebody and you still want to have this like best friend that you confide in that's mm -hmm. the opposite sex. May I just say that you never sounded more Gen Z than when you said uh, catching, catching feelings. feelings. Yeah. Wait, I thought Gen Z says something else. No, I'm pretty sure that's a Gen Z thing. I thought they said like simping. <laughs> well, I mean, that would be one thing that they would they say. They say other stuff. You could catch feelings and then start simping. The, the reason that we talk about this is because that kind of sexual temptation is, it, it's the only thing in the Bible that it legitimately says to flee. So if the, the Bible basically says that if, if Satan is there, you know, you put on your, your full armor of God and you stand boldly, you, you attack, you know, you're, you're confident and you stand strong. But when it talks about sexual temptation, it tells us to flee. And so there are pastors that I know of I that, that. that will, they have Graham? a, uh, Billy Graham, I know Chip Ingram does the same thing. If there's even an opportunity where they need to drive like a female employee home or like just need to be in an elevator alone, I mean, that might be kind of extreme, but they do not put themselves in a position where they could connect with the opposite sex like that. Because I believe that God designed men and women to, you know, to have that kind of attraction for each other when they, when they really get to talk and get to know each other and connect like that. I think that it follows that you know, men and women just, they have a chemistry like that. And while you might feel like, oh, I'm never going to do something like that. I, I just think that it's a good idea to put those boundaries on yourself. And it goes back to 1 Corinthians 6, 18 that says, flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. And so I believe that we are supposed to flee even the, the opportunity to commit one of those sins because a, a private relationship with someone of the opposite sex will lead to opportunities where you could potentially do something. And if the person that you're dating right now does have best friends of the opposite sex, if it were me, I would want to have a conversation mm -hmm. with Sam and kind of ask, you know, so can you give me more details about this? Like, mm -hmm. what is this really about? Like. Do you really have to hang out with them privately and mm -hmm. talk with them privately? 
and just kind of ask like what the hindrances are if there are any because if he was kind of reluctant like oh I it's not a big deal I don't really care you know I'm not gonna stop being really close with them just because you're in my life I would be like well then what are you going to do once we're married? Are you still going to want to go hang out with these other ladies while mm -hmm. we're married? Like, you know, it just, it starts with such a tiny thing and then it will evolve into a big thing if you're not careful. And we're not saying this always happens and people may hate us in the comments or something, but what we're saying is this is the precautions that we have taken, mm -hmm. the rules that we have made boundaries even though we never had an issue with it we mm. just respect each other in that way um but yeah that is just our opinion and that actually leads us to our final point which is imagine to yourself what if your boyfriend or your girlfriend had a guy or girl best friend you know whoever, whatever the opposite sex is what if they had someone that they wanted to hang out with all by themselves or someone that like she said wanted to facetime or phone call them you know all by themselves how would that make you feel because we know in our heart of hearts you know even if if i had a girl best friend which i don't but if i did i would think to myself well i, I know that i would never ever do anything but to sadie that would be a horrible, horrible feeling of insecurity, mm -hmm. of not knowing for sure. Because no matter how well you know someone, you know, I would never, even, even like for her work, like if she has to go, you know, out with like her coworkers or her boss or whatever, I'm just, I'm just, I just get jealous anyway, even though I know that she's not going to do anything or even have an opportunity. I just, I just don't like it. And I just, you should just put yourself in another person's shoes, even if you don't think it's a big deal. Just make sure that you're putting other people first and serving your wife or your husband. So that, that would be what I would say. Yeah, and if you are in a position where it could look bad, but it's not really like your intentions, I would just communicate like, hey, I have to go out to dinner with my coworkers. All of us have to go out tonight for like a bonding event. Just communicate that to your significant other like in any type of situation like if he gets hit on or i get hit on or something still we'll communicate that to each other um just because you never want to come across as you're hiding something mm -hmm. just making sure that there's open communication and there's honesty there that's mm -hmm. um really important and i think it just builds trust and it builds more of a connection like mm -hmm. a, a stronger relationship but anyway guys if you enjoyed this video please leave a like comment and subscribe and we will see you guys in the next video see you next video i used to say see you next week but now i don't know what to say. <laughs> that's okay they'll still understand see ya bye